Hey, everybody. Welcome to UJ Sports Live. My name is Roddy DeBulsley. I am joined by Jim Dunn and Dane Young and some nerdy guy. I'm, I'm right next to you. How do I not get first dibs on intro? Because you you're eating my hush puppies. <laughs> So we're at Classic City Eats with a basket of hush puppies, a uh, uh, grilled chicken salad that's, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, gr the grilled chicken salad that's just phenomenal. That's that's what's got me all slim and trim here is the, the eat, knocking back those salads. And we have a lot of stuff to talk about. It's uh, Tuesday here at Classic City Eats. Good crowd. Uh, everyone appropriately spaced. Everyone, uh, all those servers wearing masks. The place has been... Uh, uh, sterilized from top to bottom they come in with a fogger and do it every day so uh classic city is a great place to go of course if uh you're out and about you're scared or you're scared to go out come here i feel like you're too close to me yeah we do need some social distancing <laughs> between me and jake y'all guys are like family anyway no i'm mr musk <laughs> <laughs> and we need a new recruiting director at ugasports.com he's had way too many of these uh, academia beers so uh shout to him uh, of course, we have Coach Dunn and on and uh, Dane Young. Uh, Coach, uh, before we say thanks to all of our friends at uh, Academia Brewing Company, Athens Ford, Aaron Overhead Doors, and uh, your pie, there was some breaking news before we came on the air that uh, one of your former players has been nominated for the College Football Hall of Fame. Tell us a little bit about that, Coach. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, fortunately for me, I get some of these uh, emails a little bit earlier because they mail out the ballots to people that are in the Hall of Fame so we can vote. But uh, I really hadn't even looked at it this morning until you told me. I had to take my wife over to get a little blood work. Uh, and so I hadn't looked. I don't get up and start reading emails like you two guys do. So, But seriously, uh I was just elated. Of course, champ should be a slam dunk, just like David Pollock was last year. Uh, really uh, excited for him. I got to text him right away, and he was excited. And uh, just a uh, guy deserves it. I mean, not many guys can say that they played both ways like he did. He really had more stats than uh, Woodson, who won the Heisman Trophy. Uh, he had more stats, offense, defense, and everything. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about champ getting in and uh, hopefully be able to go up there this year and and watch uh, David get in in December. So you're basically saying he was robbed of the Heisman Trophy. I don't know that he was <laughs> robbed. I just don't I just don't think we ever promoted him. It was I mean I mean we never got to the point where he was his name was up there like like, like Woodson's was, you know, particularly the next year cuz you know he had a, had a big year in 98 uh, too. But, uh, you know, it was all between Woodson and Peyton in 97. So not much you can say about being robbed. So I don't want to get into that kind of stuff. <laughs> if I'm going to get uh, scrutinized, I want it to be about something I say about uh, something somebody else, not Champ Bailey. Uh, would Champ have wanted – I mean, he seems like such a reserved guy. I don't know that he would have wanted a Heisman campaign. That's just – he seems so – anti limelight i mean he, he got it done on the field don't get me wrong it's just he never was never kind of a chest pounding guy in my opinion no he wasn't but i mean anybody would like to be promoted for that that's the most signatory uh, award you can ever win in college football but uh i'm saying he wouldn't want to win it i just i don't know that yeah. he'd, he'd be no, i'm talking about I don't, I don't know that he would have been that you know he doesn't like the limelight just like when the he didn't go to the green room. Uh, he, he was invited to go up there, but he had a big party at his home in Folkestone for all his friends and family. That kind of typifies what you're saying. So, uh, but probably the best two-way player, in my opinion, in the modern day era is Champ Bailey. I mean, back in the old days, you had guys that played both ways and that, that was just part of the way you did things. But Champ just uh, got the perfect name. I mean, he's a champ. <laughs> I was gonna ask. Uh, I was gonna ask you, Coach. Uh, I guess you know. At what point did you know uh, in, in your relationship with Champ Bailey that something like this was possible for him? I mean, was it clear, like from practice one, that maybe this kid had it? Yeah. Here's the thing that you know. One of the things you do when you bring the freshman in, back in the old days, now they come in so much earlier, and you have them. But you, you bring them in there, and you test them and you do everything and then you uh, and this was you got to remember this was our first freshman class and we'd only had spring practice 
with our returning guys. So it's my first year. And we go in and you go up on the board and you have them all, all the things listed and everything. And, and I'm just telling you, everybody in the room, it was like, Champ Bailey, are you shitting me? <laughs> I've excused my language. But I mean, that first rattle out of the box, it was just like, you just knew that you had something just incredible because flopping his hips, speed, jumping ability, everything. Of course, we had seen him in high school and all the tape, but it just, this makes you, I'm just getting excited reliving that moment when we had that first meeting. And then I've had some meetings before where we were saying, Ooh, why did you sign this guy? You know what I mean? God, we've had hopefully not too many of those, but uh, it goes back and forth. But that, that was probably one of the most elated situations I've ever been. The first time champ went on the field for us. And, you know, early on, we, we didn't play him as much at corners. We played him at safety. And uh, I was watching that 96 game the other night. It was on the SEC network against Auburn. And he, he was playing safety a lot. And, uh, you know, his first year. But guy could play every position on offense or defense in the skill level. I mean, he could have played quarterback. Our guy, uh, Dave McMahon, over here with the stat champ, seventh in Heisman voting in 1998. Uh, but he didn't take that home. He, he did take home the Bronco Nagurski Award for the nation's yeah. best defensive player. So uh, not exactly a not exactly a, a bad year for him. And I, Who maybe, won the Heisman in 98 then? 98 Heisman. Yeah. I know. Was that Ron Day? Ricky Williams. Ah, I'm a year off. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah. That's, a pretty good, that's a pretty good choice, yeah. too. Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, Ricky Ritz, what a running back! I love to watch that guy turn it up. You know, yeah, he's, he's a badass. So, our congratulations to Champ Bailey for being nominated. Uh, I'm with the coach. I think he is a first ballot guy. It's like, I mean, when you look at what he did in the college game, uh, again, for people that remember um, playing both ways, you know, a thousand snaps in one season i mean and, you know, and 100 the, snaps in a game the last of a dying breed i mean yeah. I, nobody does that anymore and i don't think nobody chat, can i don't think you'll see anybody do it yeah. again best, I mean, it's going to be very rare the best champ story as far as reps was a game we played over at auburn in the fog over there that night Ugh. and we, we ended up beating them um uh, and champ played over 120 i'm not sure exactly how many snaps it was but he was thoroughly pissed when we took him out <laughs> he wanted to know why he wasn't back in i said champ you gotta rest a little bit i mean offense defense pass uh special teams i mean just unbelievable and he, he was like nothing you know just nothing he just kept didn't bother him a lick this you know, like they don't make them like that anymore. And again, for a guy, just what's always impressed me though has been his humility. You know, that's oh, why yeah. I say he's just. Uh, I'd you know, in the world, you never more, stuff like nobody that. was more proud of him than all the Georgia fans went to the Hall of Fame this year when he got up there and made that acceptance speech and uh, really talked about, you know, so many things that were special to him, but particularly about you know, his, his feelings about the way black athletes and, and blacks in general were treated. Uh, he just did an unbelievable speech that night. We got him and then you've got um, some great spokesmen for, for former Georgia players out there. You know, I think you're going to have uh, Ben Watson and the work he's been doing lately. No question. You know, just, well, I say lately. Since forever. Day, forever. <laughs> back in the end of college. So, uh, Georgia has some great spokesmen out there, and uh, if you're a Georgia fan, this is another honor, a, a chance for one of your best to be honored. And, uh, Coach, we appreciate you giving us your insight on champ. Uh, other breaking – I don't know there's really any breaking news. The players are back on campus. We did hear that there were a few positive COVID tests, you know, but uh, – To those be expected. Are, to be expected. You test 105 people, you're going to find a few. UGA has not confirmed that, nor will they. Uh, uh, the HIPAA, HIPAA. Law, HIPAA laws prohibit them from doing that. But from our sources are telling us, look, these kids are being tested. They're being watched out for. Uh, you're going to have a few positive tests, as you do with any group of people that you come up with. So um, uh, that's not really a concern right now for anybody. Uh, from what I understand, the workouts, the voluntary workouts, the ones that the kids are allowed to do now, are going well. Great participation, you know, full participation. All the freshmen are on campus. Uh, they're learning stuff. And we actually had a 3-2-1 report 
If you go to ugasports.com right now, if you look at the very front, you will see the Georgia 321 report. That's three observations, two questions, and one prediction. And we threw in a bunch of stuff that we've heard from uh, the guys working out. And they haven't been working out that long, but you know we've, we've been able to dig around and find a few pieces of information that you might be interested in. Uh, quite an interesting prediction there on the status of JT Daniels mm, and yes. what that might mean. Uh, who's going to step, you know, there's some spots in the offensive line to fill in. We gave you some uh, thoughts there. What's going to happen with the tight ends? Uh, Dane had some breaking news earlier this morning about uh, one of the tight ends, uh, a five-star guy, you know, ha having a little uh, a minor surgery that need, that'll need to be taken care of before fall. So that was a great update from Dane. If you go to the vault and uh, go to the vent, uh, we had stuff on James Cook. A lot of people, I don't want to say they forgot about James Cook, but with all the Kendall Milton talk and uh, Dejon Edwards and Zamir White, Zamir looks so stoked, you know. I think it's another situation of, oh, yeah, and James Cook. And I don't think you're going to have a oh, yeah, James Cook season. I think it's going to be like, holy crap, here comes James Cook again out of the backfield. So if you go to uh, ujsports.com, check out the Georgia 321 report. Now, granted, it's an, it's an opinion column. We throw in some stuff that we've been told, but um, – If it's it, bad, blame Roddy. Thank you. That's all I'll say. <laughs> if, if you hate it, uh, don't take it out on Jake. Take it out on Dane because yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's Dane's fault, whatever it is there. Uh, we also had some other stories there. You had a pretty interesting one. Uh, well, I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you mentioned the story Dane broke about the tight end and, and maybe the minor surgery. Coach, I wanted to ask you, how common is it for guys to show up and go through these, you know, uh, physicals, evaluations, and, and realize that maybe there's a, something out there kind of nagging them or, or, or a little something that maybe they didn't get taken care of in high school that, you know, you fix with this, uh, this gap in time before uh, things really get ramped up? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's – real prevalent but it's certainly something that uh, these kids are subjected to a lot more strenuous physicals and a lot you know more uh, you know some kids never been to orthopedic have an orthopedic person look at their knees or any area so uh, we just do a, a complete makeover for every one of these kids that come in and I'm sure it's true around the country but not only do you do the uh, orthopedic part but you know all the blood work everything just a complete setup. And then they do the, uh, which I really think is uh, among the best in the country with Ron Corson and his staff. And they have that room in there where they do the uh, testing to uh, make sure that if you ever get a concussion, you, you have a, a protocol where you can look at what your situation was prior to a concussion and compare that. So they do those kind of tests on them too. So they're prepared for everything here. And then you add in, as Roddy mentioned, the COVID testing, which has just been completely uh, monitored day and night. These guys, these kids are monitored by Ron and his staff and the strength staff. So, uh, you know, I think they're doing all they can and then completely keeping everything sanitized. But, but as you mentioned, I'll answer that. It's not very common for a guy to come in here and uh, find out about a serious injury because he probably knows that. But sometimes you find these little, like in the case of Washington, looks like he's going to have to have a little cleanup scope on his knee, which is, as all of us know, in today's jargon, doesn't take very long. So that'll be good that he can not only have it done, but have it fin fixed here where we can and uh, take care of his rehab and uh, have our own doctors do it. I think of the guys that have mid-season, we'll go back to Trayvon Walker hurting his wrist. Yep. You know, we had a note about that in the 3 one as well. A small note, again, just the, t the tidbit stuff, you know, stuff you need oh, to you know. you really went out on a limb on Trayvon. You really think he's going to be a player? Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> Rolling Ma the dice. Maybe, you know. Yeah, it yeah. also went on Lewis scene too. So, I really – I really, well, you did. That's on that thin branch. But I, I tell you what, I, I will say have a note about his and that's hard. It's hard for me – to, to keep interrupting you because yeah. of this system here, but it's hard for me to give you any love, but I'm just going to tell you right now, I read that today and it really pisses me off that you know more about what's going on than I do. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no, you drop, you drop tidbit. No, no I don't get to go show. over there. I haven't been up over once there. While and give us some good information. <laughs> I haven't been over there since March and it really, <laughs> it bothers me, you know, cause I enjoy it so much and, I don't get the, that interaction with the kids just going in. It, not only is my foot hurt because I'm not getting treatment, but 
been in the training room and getting to you know, being around. It just I, that's part of my mo, man. I just it bothers it, it, me. It's your you're in your DNA, Coach. You're as the bulldog true as you ever have been. Uh, Hey, Roddy, we do have a question on tight ends uh, in our YouTube chat from Cliff Payne, and he's asking, how is Trey McKitty doing so far when it comes to transfers? All the chatter is about Jamie Newman. What about McKitty? And you kind of get into that a little bit in your 3-2-1. I mean, you think about what they've lost. You know, I mean, there's there's a big opening with Charlie Warner gone. You know, And Eli Wolf also. I mean, a guy who had SEC experience and was a, a you know, Especially towards the end of the guy. season, how yeah. many snaps he got, you know, when, when he needed him, he was there. He, he made his blocks, you know. He was a guy you knew you could rely on. Right. You know, he, he's getting it done. So now you have this huge opening for when you when you run one, even if it's just one tight end, because we don't know exactly what Monk is going to do if he's going to run one tight end or run a lot of uh, two tight end sets. But now that's open. So who steps up? Is it John Fitzpatrick, who we've been kind of waiting on to, you know, we watching him get bigger? You remember everyone fighting over Brett Seether? Sure. Remember with that Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, everybody wanted Brett Seether, so he's here. You got Ryland Goad, who's, mm. uh, you know. Coming off the injury. Coming off the injury. And uh, then you got Darnell Washington. We're just talking about him, a five-star guy. But then you get an FSU transfer. Now, the FSU fans are not – we're down on Trey McKinnon. Yeah, they were fine to lose him, to be honest. The, the, FS, the FSU media was down <laughs> on Trey. Pretty rough, you know. But well, tell uh, me this: Is there anything they're up on on FSU? Tell me <laughs> no, no. Uh, That's what, a good, what is? But no, no, I'm just me. saying there were some sour grapes. There were some anger. But from what we're hearing, be you better. You might want to get that Trey McKinney, you know, jersey because I think this guy is going to have fit into the system really well. I, I just. Uh, Everything that we've been hearing with him being on campus to answer the, uh, the gentleman's question is that Trey McKitty, look for him to be one of the guys that steps out there when they put out that starting tight end. That could be your guy. Fitzpatrick getting bigger, Cedar getting, and Cedar apparently has been a nice surprise. Yeah, you know, you know he, he was a really kid, became a little. Yeah, I mean when we yeah when we saw him on the sidelines last year, we were like, oh man, this was a, clearly an eleventh hour hail mary pickup, you know, because you needed an additional tight end. But the reports are that he's really put on some good weight and progressed along the way. I mean, he was a good athlete coming oh, yeah, out. That was there was no question about that. But it was, will he be able to get in there and do some of the inline blocking that he needed to be able to do? I questioned that last year. Yeah. Sounds like he's getting a lot closer to that. And you look at Fitzpatrick, I mean, even last year, we saw Fitzpatrick, he had to put on 20, 25 pounds of muscle. That kid had really bulked up. His shoulders just got wider and wider and wider every time we saw him. So uh, I, I think that right now it's Trey McKitty and who el whoever else is next. You know, there's, there's a lot to choose from. So I, I think, yeah, we're talking about Jamie Newman. It's easy to forget about Trey McKitty. Sure. Especially when the FSU fans are running his name through the dirt. Everybody loves a quarterback, man. Come on. Well, that, that's a good point. We're all going to talk about the quarterback. Yes, sir. Coach. Yeah, I would like to just interject this one point that from a fan perspective and, and just general, there's a tendency when a guy is not just a, a champ Bailey type uh, or the first day that he come here that you have a tendency to kind of get lost in the shuffle and people don't, uh, you know, they're not a five-star player and you're not talking about it. But part of being a, having a great program is developing guys that you feel like have the potential maybe not to be there right now but to come in and supplement your squad play some special teams and then develop and become players like Tay Crowder I mean whoever it might be you know the whole point is by the time they're there they're fourth fourth third or fourth year they're really doing something and as we talked about in our reports when we were still doing them over there alive that either was really a, a coming on strong there during the uh, did a great job and in the chat ty samuel points out that uh, lawrence cager last year kind of the same thing where he comes in without right. super high expectations and just really surges past what anyone thought he could do speaking of tight ends by the way we did have an update yesterday on 2021 four star uh, brock bowers out of california uh, spoke to him sounds like things going real well on george's in there um and uh possibly even a summer visit lined up now obviously he can't come to campus and see coaches and that kind of thing but he said hey you know i might spend my own dime just to come hang out in athens which uh is pretty oh. telling. <laughs> that's pretty that would be <laughs> Hey, we could have some uh, volunteer workouts over there at the intramural fields for uh, all of those guys. Hey, get you know, it, see if you can get Edwards to come with him. To run <laughs> <laughs> Go see if we get a uh, – if they're out, are they working out, you want to swing by, pick up a little interview? 
I might. No, I'll tell you what we could do. We could get pop in. We could get Brock that invite them all over to uh, Prince Avenue, and they could work out over there and have yeah. a good time. And Brock That'd be great. Come on over. Brock too. Sure. Brock. 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 Hey and guys, guys uh, Bishop Park is open in, in <laughs> Athens, and uh, it's real close to my house. So if you want to make it easy on me, uh, go work out at Bishop Park. <laughs> you could really hide in the bushes there, man. That'd be cool. <laughs> Coach with the Zeger from the guy, you know, he got those bushes down. Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, getting Brock out for that summer visit. It's gonna be very interesting. How how long has the non-contact period been extended through? Through July thirty first. So by that point, if they're allowed, if they're when August first rolls around, a lot of these kids are gonna be, you know, having two a day practices at their high school. And coaches are going to be in the middle of, you know, camp and stuff like that. So it's going to be tough to get a lot of visits. That's a very unique thing, though, because he's the only kid that I've talked to that said that, like, hey, I'm not even really that concerned about meeting with the coaches. He feels like he's got a good enough relationship with the coaches. He says, you know, I just want to look at the the town, kind of refresh my memory and see how I feel like I fit there. I think that's. Yeah, you know, one of the things that's going to, that's being proposed and Roddy usually has the direct line on the NCA stuff, but but what I've heard is because it's the, of all the not being able to evaluate and missing the whole spring for the guys, uh, and the fact that most teams will start practice August sixth or August seventh, they they might set up a deal where the non uh, ten, you know, the ten coaches, you know, the only guys that can recruit plus the head coach, but they might let some of these analysts and some of these other people go on the road some in August and go out and, and analyze these kids and, and watch them or just say you can have two, any two, and then maybe those analysts could help coach and then the coaches could go out. So, I mean, it's going to be a – don't hold me to it, but they're looking at trying to help the coaches maybe get on the road some. and, and But you don't – it'd be kind of like getting ready for a bowl game. You know, you can't really – you got to practice, but you also got to recruit. Uh, they might be able to do some of that. That's got to be a great idea because you got to like some of Georgia's support staff, and I don't, I don't mean just the assistant coaches. I mean they're like their oh, assistant. Oh, Nick Williams. I mean that's we, a guy we, who has been, played a major role in tons of recruitments to this yeah. point for Georgia. Um, when Jonas is out on the road, yeah, we hear we hear strong things about that as well. So, you know, they've got some good um, uh, guys they can call up while they're busy coaching that they can sit down and talk to these guys. So I'm impressed with that. Uh, I'm also impressed. I uh, recently had to swing out by Athens Ford to get a, uh, some parts for my Ford Explorer. I want to put one of those uh, uh, hitch uh, receivers on it so that I can actually pull some stuff because yeah, I don't need to buy a boat or something like that. <laughs> you know. And uh, went out there. The parts department, fantastic. All Ford parts, all, you know, and then they like, here's your different options. Here's when we can get it by. Here's how we can install it. I, I was thinking this thing is going to be a giant pain in the butt. And again, that's nothing against Athens Ward. I just I think anytime we got to do something like that, walk in, you know. Who looks for the service? Exactly. <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, hang on a second. And then they start asking me questions. Well, what, you know, you're for this? I'm like, no, it's big. It's black. It's a 2016. I don't know the, the jargon. He's like, well, is it, what, what's the trim package? I don't know. He's like, guy runs out, takes a picture of, you know, looks at it real quick and also takes a picture of the VIN number, comes back, pops it in. And of course, it tells him everything to within a fraction of an inch what it needs and how to do it. He's like, here's what it's going to cost. A hell of a lot cheaper than I expected it to be. Here's what it's going to cost to put it in. Way cheaper than I thought it was going to be. And here's how fast we can do it. Ten times quicker than I expected. So, big shout out to the – and, again, I did, it's not like, hey, I'm Roddy DeBulsey and I advertise your – no. They didn't know me from Adam. But the guy took care of me in a fantastic – just some idiot off the street. Now, of course, I'm covered in breadcrumbs and <laughs> look, like, look like a hobo. But he took care of me as if I actually uh, was, you know, the, the king of Siam. So – Shout out to the service and parts department at Athens Ford. They have great deals on new and pre-owned vehicles. Everything you get from them is going to have a lifetime powertrain warranty, even the pre-owned vehicles, so long as they're under 80,000 miles. But brand new vehicle, lifetime powertrain warranty, and they have uh, seven-year financing on some of these vehicles. 0% APR, fan, uh, 0% APR for qualified buyers. And if you want some of the newer ones, you can get six-year 0% APR for qualified buyers. So Check out our friends at Athens Ford. Even if you go to their website, they're going to give you a $250 uh, uh, off any vehicle just for going to the freaking website. So even if you're on your way there, 
<laughs> before you get out of your car, <laughs> bring up Athens Ford on your phone, get the 250 bucks, you know, so you, you, you just can't beat it. So big shout out to them and very impressed with what they do for us. I can't wait to go in your boat. Yeah. <laughs> you scared of water. You hate water. I can't really swim. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. We do have a bunch of questions today over on the uh, vent and the vault at UGA sports.com. Uh, a couple of recruiting ones here. So I'll touch on those pretty quick. OU Herschel Walker, good friend of the show, our buddy Chuck. He says, uh, do you think Xavier and Story transferring to IMG helps or hurts UGA? For those of you who don't uh, follow recruiting, maybe as closely as people who have yeah, to, like me, Xavier and Story, four-star, uh, rivals 250 kid. He may even be a 100 kid, but I know he's definitely in the 250. Um, six foot three, 240 pound jumbo athlete type, uh, looking like probably an outside linebacker at the next level. This is a kid that is not maybe the most familiar name to fans, partly because of where he was before. He was playing in Graceville, Florida, which is just outside of Mariana, which is outside of Tallahassee. (laughs) (laughs) It's in between like Tallahassee and Pensacola. So it's kind of no man's land. It's not like a place where he, a lot of people get seen. Uh, announced yesterday, though, he's transferring to IMG Academy. A lot of people concerned, you know, how does this affect Georgia's recruitment? I, I think it's a boost for Georgia, personally. You've got to commit already on the, on the uh, team down there at IMG from yeah. Lavoisier Carroll. He's going to be able to get in his ear. Lavoisier was excited about it. You've got a ton of guys who come through that uh, IMG to UGA pipeline already. Uh, Isaac Nod has done that. Uh, Nolan. Nolan Smith. Uh, you've got some younger guys I know that Georgia's interested in down there. They're looking at as well. Omar Burroughs, Walter Nolan's another kid that's down there. So there's a lot to uh, like, I think, about him transferring there. Like I told people, it makes for one-stop shopping. You don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to fly into the Graceville Regional Airport, uh, wherever that may be. Uh, you know, you can swing down to Tampa, go see a bunch of kids in one fell swoop, and it makes it uh, makes it all a lot easier. So I don't see any downside for Georgia for him going there. Uh, obviously, holding off Alabama is still going to be a challenge, but definitely. Got a 2022 offensive lineman, Dane Shore, that is uh, going to IMG uh, that's getting offers from everywhere. So that pipeline you will be helpful. I just wanted to say his name because his name's Dane. Dude, I am so <laughs> up on this kid because there's another D-A-Y-N-E <laughs> out there. I told him he better tell me first. He, uh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot about uh, uh, Shore going down there. He's uh, He was at uh, Denmark before, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, that's um, right. Denmark and Alpharetta. All right, uh, we've got a lot of questions. This one's a good one here for the coach, JBF94 on the board. He says, how would you compare Arian Smith to Miko Hardman? Seem to have similar skill sets and builds to me. You know, that's a tough one to uh, say for sure because – we know what everything that Miko's done and particularly what he just did in a Super Bowl winning uh, team out there. But, you know, Miko was the best athlete at his school over at Elberton. And so he played quarterback and he, he had uh, good ball skills, but he had to learn how to catch the ball and develop as a receiver. You know, here, I think Arian's got a little advantage on that. And the fact that he's an all around athlete and has been, has some ball skills catching the ball coming in, whether he'll develop and, and be as explosive once he catches the ball as Miko was because of his quickness and speed and change of direction. But we hadn't had anybody here with this guy's kind of speed, I don't think, as far as pure flat out speed, except that kid on the track team that was on the relay team with him there and in the USA team. But the guy's got world class speed. I hope that he'll have the quickness and change the direction that uh, that we see with uh, Miko. But all indications from what I've heard, you know, he had to have a, a small uh, operation on his hand, uh, which is another good thing to have our people up here. I, I think he went to the, the sur- surgeon over in Atlanta that we use. But let me just say uh, everything I've heard about this guy's athletic ability uh, when we were recruiting him, not only that, but since he's been here, uh, he, he's kind of got that wow factor to him. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it, he's got an advantage, like you said, I think, of having worked mostly at wide receiver. And that was something that Miko, Miko had to learn everything. Now, it, it wasn't a big learning curve because yeah. every camp he went to, he played DB and wide receiver and a little bit of everything else. So, uh, but, you know, Arian may have that. And like you said, I think the thing people forget about Arian Smith, 
ran in the Pan Am games, uh, the under 19 with uh, Matt, Matt Bowling, Bowling, who's the uh, sensation at UGA track, one of the fastest kids in America. Well, Arian Smith's his teammate <laughs> in the four by one. That's uh, pretty. That's that's pretty uh, pretty good. Uh, I would say vetting there on that on their their end. I think that Arian's more of a, a natural sprinter speed guy, whereas uh, Miko kind of grew up doing everything. So Miko had the wider range of experience, but Arian's a little more dialed in. I think uh, Miko's maybe the overall better football player, but Arian might be the better wide receiver. And again, uh, we actually mentioned this in the three, two, one reports. What we're hearing about what that kid is like on the field when he runs routes and stuff, uh, he's opening eyes. And like, people expect him to be fast. You expect the fast, the track guy to be fast, but when you see it, you know, it's like, uh, what is it, uh, Schwartz at uh, Auburn? Yeah, yeah. When There's you, fast and then there's fast. When you see it in real, well, Miko running away from guys in the NFL, yeah. multi million dollar cornerbacks, and he's just blowing by, with an angle, he blows past them. There's a reason Miko went so high. He, le he left early, and a lot of people are like, oh, that's a bad idea, Miko. You haven't been playing receiver that long. There's just something about speed that you can't coach and you can't catch. So I think that uh, Arian Smith is you – know, I don't think fans were as excited about him as they should have been. Oh, yeah, we got the, fa we, the fast guy. Right. Well, there's more to it than just the fast guy because getting the ball, we'll see what happens. Are you no. serious? Are you serious people aren't excited about him? <laughs> they were not. I mean, they were uh, – Jermaine Burton, people got really excited about him. Uh, Marcus well, all Parker, they talked about him Robinson, Robinson, all those guys excited. I, you know, I think, I think part of it with Smith though was that I mean he wasn't out in public. You know he wasn't doing a ton of camps. Uh, you know it wasn't a situation. I mean Roseme was every time the door was open he was somewhere yeah. doing a camp. You know he was doing interviews. Uh, you could get him on the phone. You could not get Arian Smith on the phone. One I got him one time. Uh, yeah. but, but see a lot of people thought he's the sprinter who plays football. You know right. Whereas a lot of people are excited about the football player who has world class track speed. They get what we saw with Miko Hardman. We saw that with, you know, uh, Nate McBride, his football player who can fly. You know, we saw that with uh, Richard LeCount, you know, guys who are football players who are just super fast and people get more excited about it. And a lot Stokes. Of people him. Stokes. How about Stokes? People were worried about Stokes because, again, Stokes yeah. is a guy who is just learning to play the position. Right. You know, he didn't even play that much in high school. But you see what that speed can do. Tyson Campbell, everyone was thrilled to death. He's a football player with world class speed. Therefore, you know, he's five star and everyone's bouncing off the wall. So I think I'm not saying people weren't excited. They just weren't as excited about him as they should have been. James Cook syndrome. Roddy, you make a good point with the specialist versus uh, well-roundedness. Like when I covered Terry Godwin in high school, he would just get bored and walk over and be the goalie on the soccer team just because he was that good of an athlete and he could pop out there and, and do that in practice. And then he would go play basketball and he played baseball. And so at some schools you have guys that literally do everything and they do it really well. Uh, yeah. But in some places, especially, I think the more that we do this going forward, there's going to be specialists that don't get as much attention because they're not as visible in as many places. That's a good point. Well, yeah, I could see Smith jumping right in there as a kick returner. You know, of course, we got Blaylock back, uh, who's, who did a good job. And uh, yeah, we got, Ring, we got Ringo. About a lot of people had was, do you, do you think there's a possibility that we see Keely Ringo back there taking some punt returns? Well, you, you can see it. The three, two, one. You can see it, but I think the thing with uh, Kirby, just like anybody, got to prove. You know, he wasn't afraid to put Blaylock in there, but he had to earn his spurs. And don't forget Jackson. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned him in the report, but Jackson is uh, is going to be special. Uh, was the things, and we didn't get to see him much because he hurt his hand. But uh, we got some guys coming back that just. Uh, Got a lot to prove, but really uh, got some really good talent. You're talking about some freak speed, but I'll tell you, uh, Kiaris Jackson might be just a tick slower than those guys. He's the last one I'd want to square up with no, though, to have to tackle. He will just run right through you. So uh, a lot of good options there, I'll, though, for sure. I don't even want to play chess with that guy. <laughs> you know, I know the first year when when he – the year that he ended up getting the red shirt, this will be his third year, right? I believe yeah. that's – yeah, yeah. Well, I know when Chaney had him, we had plays that we would call the formation and then we would call Kiaris in, in it because they wanted to make sure he was a guy in there blocking. So you just that little, <laughs> saying, little I mean, that shows his toughness that, you know, as a true freshman with all those guys we had, you know, all three of them went to the league that certain points that Chaney would say, hey, this is blah, 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 Kiaris. 
I mean, I like that as a coach. That, that points out that this guy's got a skill that when he goes in there, he can do that, which is tough blocking and everything. But he can, he's also got the ability to, you know, run the jet sweep. But we, I tell you what, it's going to be hard to figure out who's going to run the dang jet sweep this year. They're going to be stacked up like cordwood waiting to go out there. I mean, look at you got Robertson, you got Garrett, you got Smith, you got. I mean, all those guys can run it. I mean, yeah. but that means a triple reverse, right? Yeah, we can run it. We can run it. We can run the option off of that. I think you just need to have a formation play call and then just say Peach County. Yeah, that's what I'm. Hey, look, yeah. you know my love for Peach County. <laughs> just, I'm, I'm a sucker just, for just a Peach just County. Just Peach County. Uh, speaking of pizzas, I want to give a, fr- a shout out to our friends at Europe Eye. They have the peach and prosciutto pizza. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm just saying, it, it's fantastic. <laughs> and right now, uh, I got the uh, the email because, you know, I have their app. Uh, free delivery from Europe Eye. So if you oh. want to actually want some, uh, you don't even have to go pick it up. They're going to send it to you for free. Uh, you can't beat that. So free delivery from Europe Eye, so from their locations. Uh, and you can get their specialty uh, Georgia peaches and prosciutto pizza. It's a uh, phenomenal. You won't you won't get it anywhere else. No one's willing to make well, something that delicious. You know, you, you get all the the pineapple hate on on pizza. People are always railing against that. I, I tell you, if you, if you haven't tried it, go try it. The 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 it's the the peaches with the, the prosciutto and that sauce. It's perfect. It's a perfect marriage. Sweet, acid, salty. It's the whole thing. Heat. Yeah. You know, one thing that we could do, seriously, for the non-football people, you two guys could have your own cooking show. (laughs) I think eating show would be a little bit more appropriate. I mean, I look on Twitter and there's Jake showing what he's cooking tonight. And uh, Roddy's eating at all these restaurants around the world. I mean. Well, we uh, we need to get a deal with Rec Tech Grills. Just saying. Cheers. I agree. Uh, Speaking of eating, I will. I will congratulate Roddy on his feltness there. He's really uh, looks like he's come back in a lot better shape than maybe some of our D linemen have. <laughs> yeah, we've been hearing that uh, quarantine was not uh, kind to some of the, the bigger boys. Quarantine was good for me. I, I stayed at home. I just I, wor- I, I died and walked a lot. That was just Thank a you, joke. Coach. That was that was a joke. But I it wasn't a joke about you losing. But no, seriously, I have, has anybody ever been involved with a lineman? Or no alignment. It just says, "Man, it's early. I can't wait to go out and work out." I mean, <laughs> these guys aren't going to do it. You got to push them a little bit. A yeah. receiver and quarterback. Let's go throw some routes and a D lineman. Hey, let's go over there and do some up downs and do some agility drills. Are you kidding me? I'm I mean, not Jordan Davis <laughs> eats the Swedish fish on the sidelines. So. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be ready, though. I tell you, that's a great thing came out with us since our last show. That July the 15th deal, uh, we'll have to start on the 16th because, uh, I mean, we'll have to start practice a day later because we're playing on the seven, uh, the, the on Monday night, I think, yeah. instead of uh, Saturday. But, hey, did y'all re- uh, see – I'm trying to look around here. We're talking about – I saw where Virginia is still not – has a, doesn't have a date set when their players are coming back. It says to be determined. So – Hey, we'll take all we can get. I mean, I mean, their state's a little by, you know, a situation. I know they have a lot more. Uh, they're not as open right now as are some of our things in our state. But maybe that we'll take every advantage we can. Hey, I was gonna say, I I'm think, sure, I'm sure Kirby is just weeping at night thinking about those poor kids that can't practice for that first game. He's writing uh, Governor North and saying it's not safe yet. <laughs> it's not safe. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sure he's not concerned about that, but it is a it is a factor now because you know you you bring those guys in and they got to have you know the the they, they just can't start out on July the 15th and do all those things without some orientation. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, let me give a plug too. If anybody wants to read up on uh, Virginia and what Georgia can expect from them, Anthony Dasher uh, recently had published uh, his scouting report of Virginia. And then Brent Rollins and I kicked off a new series where we check out uh, some of the opponent's best players, including two guys at Virginia, 165, 167, both linebackers who uh, can block punts. So that may be something that I'm sure Georgia's already thinking about a little bit. Uh, but the, it gives you a good scale for what's coming up uh, on Georgia. So tell us right quick, uh, the, they, they lost their quarterback, but the, what do they got back on defense? 
Uh, on defense, it's mainly their linebackers in terms of tackling. They do have two defensive linemen with uh, decent experience. Um, really, it was more offensive attrition for Virginia, and replacing quarterback will be a big thing for them. Even yeah, though he was a mobile guy, he passed a lot. I know they brought in a Juca, I mean, a, a transfer from Mississippi State quarterback that uh, I think his name Thompson. I'm not sure, but he played in that bowl game the year that Mullen left and uh, did a good job of stepping in for – Fitzpatrick or Fitzgerald, whichever one the guy's name was, he was hurt. And so he'll probably be their quarterback. He's kind of a dual threat guy. He's got a good offensive line in front of him. There's not a lot of attrition there. They're actually returning the offensive line. So uh, they're going to have to replace a, a pretty talented running back. Yeah, so. and you don't you don't think necessarily of Virginia as a world beater, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things. But I'll tell you, under Bronco Mendenhall, I think they've done a really solid job recruiting. Um, I kind of all over the East They just barely lost. You know, you know I think that he's a he's done a really good job uh, getting get identified talent. Barely lost to Florida. Yeah, barely, just barely. Uh, we got a. Yeah, kind what of was like, the final score? And as forty-eight to something. <laughs> yeah, it's great defense they have over there. Uh, I will say this about Bronco Mendel. I remember about three or four years ago, it was like his second year. They had the ACC media days. And he said, I'm just going to be perfectly blunt with you. We only have about six or seven players on our roster. I, I don't know if it was six or seven or 10 or 11, but it kind of caught your eye that can play in the ACC. Now, that was the ultimate poor mouth, but it was also the ultimate saying it like it was and then people started asking about it he said, hey, i'm just telling you and they've come up and ended up winning their division last year i mean that was impressive and they finally beat virginia tech after losing to them so many years in a row uh we got a uh, kind of a big galaxy brain question here uh kind of a uh, for you coach uh this is from kay leland on the board he says, what are the key elements to a successful passing attack? Obviously, Georgia wanted to see uh, – Georgia fans especially wanted to see some changes in the, the, the passing game this year. What are the key elements to making a successful passing attack? Well, the first thing you got to have is you got to have a quarterback that can, can execute not only uh, what he does good, but what he keeps from doing bad. You got to protect the ball. So you got to have a quarterback that understands your – your philosophy and can uh, augment it, get it going during the game and do what you got to do to prepare. You got to have uh, the, the number one thing starting out for me is your protection though, because without good protection, you have a hard time having a, a really good passing game because we're, let's forget about the RPOs where it's a run or pass option. I mean, the, those are going to be executed no matter what, but you still got to catch it and throw it. But uh the really good teams. I never will forget when Doug Dickey was a coach at Tennessee, the first clinic I ever went to the first time I ever talked to anybody about football beside my coach at, at uh, NC state, I, he was up there le lecturing in Greensboro, North Carolina. And he talked about, you've got to be able to throw something good. And by that, he meant you got something that you can go to when everybody in the stadium knows you're going to do it when you know you got to be able to execute when the pressure's on so the bottom line is you got to be able to throw you all the different things but when push comes to shove you got to be able to throw it on third and five and third and seven and third and ten and you got to be able to read the routes read the coverage defensive uh intent and all that but um, so it boils down to having a good quarterback good protection and uh, having a good thorough knowledge of what your players can execute. And I think that's what we got in Coach Munkin. He's going to – he's certainly going to have a system. He, he's got a buffet of things he can run over the years, Oklahoma State, uh, pros, all that. But what can these guys handle? That's going to be the, the case. What, what can we handle? And I think with our running game, we can do have a pretty good play-action game on top of that. Well, that would be nice. Absolutely. I'd actually like to see some more play action, especially with, uh, you know, maybe you have to check down and toss it to James Cook in space, see what happens. Again, read the 3 2 1 report. Uh, trust me. It's, it's good stuff. I mean, can, can you imagine Todd Munkin that first day of practice, just looking around and seeing what his options are, like on the field <laughs> for the first time? 
it's probably not going to feel yeah. a lot different from being on the Browns, I would <laughs> think. I mean, you know, like you're missing Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry, but you got George Pickens and he's probably on the path. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's probably it's probably not all that upsetting, I'm sure. Um, a quick one here from ZXBY140 for uh, the whole crowd here. He says, uh, who gets more carries this season? You think Kenny McIntosh or Kendall Milton? Ooh, that's a good that's question. a good question. That's a good question. Dane, what you got? Man, I'm high on McIntosh. I thought he was such a uh, a highlight performer in in the bowl game. And Zamir White got some of their dirty yards up the middle, but McIntosh is just smooth. So I'm going to go with Kenny. Coach, any thoughts on that one? Yeah, I mean, I like Kendall. I, I think he's got. Uh, it hurt him not having spring practice, just like anybody. But he, you know, he's a very uh, knowledgeable guy and. Uh, but Kenny is smooth as a baby's ass, man. I mean, that guy is smooth, and he knows what to do. He got a lot of reps on special teams. He was a war daddy on special teams. And uh, I, I think he can be a lot like Harry in as far as get, being having a you know a role and knowing when to get in there and doing things. And uh, he, he's it's got a smile on his face, and uh, so does Kendall. I mean, he's got a good attitude. But I, I would say at this point, I would go with McIntosh just because of the, of his uh, being around here a year. He's got a head start on Milton. Roddy? I'm going to go with Kenny for this pure reason. And this is early. Now, if I think of Kendall had been here in spring, and it comes down to protection. When you're standing there and you're like, okay, here comes a blitz. you got to pick it up to save your quarterback. Kenny's had more live fire of knowing what to do, who to pick up. Now, if Kendall knows that, I'm going with Kendall. You know, if Kendall knows what to do, then I just think that he is one of the top running backs in the nation. Nothing against Kenny. I'm a big fan of his, but I think that, you know, when it comes to pound for pound, Kendall Milton might be the guy. But when you got a new quarterback there in a new system, you know, and coaches are trying to mess with you, they're sending different uh, blitz packages, different pressure packages, and your running back has to go from uh, option to getting the ball to protecting the quarterback. I like the Kenny McIntosh going, okay, I got to pick up this guy. I got to step over, get this guy. I got to, I got to throw a block. So, and again, what's Kirby about? No mistakes. Sure. High percentages, uh, no turnovers. So whoever's going to protect the quarterback the most when they're not running. Again, this is not about who can run the ball better. I just think if anybody has an advantage right now, as coach is saying, uh, Kenny McIntosh has been here. He knows what's going on. He knows, you know, I give him the slight edge. I'm giving Kenny the edge because I think Kenny feels maybe maybe he's got a little chip on his shoulder. I'm sure Kenny does too. <laughs> well, no, but here's the thing though. Kenny was not a five-star kid coming out. He wasn't getting all that press. You think James Cook, you think Zamir White, you think Kendall Milton. The people are not talking about Kenny McIntosh like they should. I think Kenny McIntosh goes on a, a, a tour this year and really makes some people um, remember his name. I, I think people uh, really underrated him coming out of high school. They said, ah, you know, how does this guy fit in? I, I think he's a tremendous uh, running back. And I think that he's going to put some people on notice this year. I know that. I want to put people on notice that uh, if you need anything done with your uh, garage door, check out our friends at Aaron Overhead Doors. They do a fantastic job when it comes to service. Uh, they also can do a lot of commercial work. If you go to their website now, you'll notice that they changed it up so that it's like a split between uh, residential and commercial because they're doing so much commercial work. They're getting so many calls to come in with those uh, the garage bay doors that need to be uh, fixed up. So many restaurants are having big open seating. You know, they're trying to expand their restaurants to get more uh, space, everything out. And they're starting to say, hey, we need to be able to close in our deck. We need to be able to move doors in and out. So they're taking out some of those windows and want to put in uh, uh, rolling uh, doors, so that, you know, glass doors so they can open and close so that you can have people out there in the winter. Uh, if you need to do any of that, check with our friends at Aaron Overhead Doors, A-A-R-O-N. They sponsored the 321 report. If you go and if you enjoy the 321 report, then you can thank the folks at Aaron Overhead Doors. Uh, if you dislike it, they had nothing to do with it. Uh, absolutely nothing. <laughs> so if you like it, thank them. If uh, you hate it, it's my fault. Uh, also, if you if you tell them that you are a Georgia fan, you get 10% off. I don't know who would do that. Uh, I don't know the uh, rationale behind it other than uh, Ryan Lucy and the folks at Aaron Overhead Doors are gigantic Georgia fans. So uh, if you get a chance, check out our friends over there at Aaron Overhead Doors. And uh, while we're talking about sponsors, I do want to give a big shout out to Academy Maroon Company. I took the family out there to have dinner the other day. 
Uh, tried that key lime pie beer. Yeah. Holy crap, that was good. I mean, that was a fantastic summer beer. It's not going to be around for very long. Get it while you can. We had the um, uh, the flatbread uh, pizza. My wife had that. Uh, my boy had the ribs, you know. Uh, we had the tripoletta. I had the fish. Did they have anything left after you were gone? Oh, no, shut up, man. They had it. We <laughs> just we had so many different types of food on the table. It was great. And my son's like, Dad, these are great. And I'm like, yes, yeah, son, those are uh, oh, the green uh, Brussels sprouts. He's like, he just wolfed them down. I'm like, you're eating Brussels sprouts. He goes, these are fantastic. Love the Brussels sprouts. I'm like, yes, I'm a good father. My son's eating Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and nothing to do with it. Just take them to the right place and get the right food. So big shout out to our friends at Academia Brewing Company. Uh, they, they introduced a new beer like yesterday. So it seems like every week there's a new beer coming out. Um, you know, they put on some of those sours, like they do them, let them sour over the weekend. So every Monday, you need to check with our friends at uh, Academia Brewing Company. Coach, I do have a question for you because we mentioned James Cook earlier, and I think a lot of fans look at the number of touches that he has had so far in his Georgia career and just say, we got to find a way to get James Cook the ball more. Is that the kind of conversation that happens in an off season among a coaching staff? Yeah, particularly for in his case, because both year, you know, the, the first practice he ever had out there, open practice, I mean, uh, you know, when everybody got to watch him, he must have caught about 20 passes. And then from that point on, everybody wanted to know why he, did, he didn't catch that many, but he got a lot and you could see, but the, you know, he's been hampered a little bit because he's of the guys he's playing behind, you know, I mean, it makes it harder to get in there, but uh, I, I just think, overall that you, you've got to get the ball to him because he, and I can see us using him uh, and what we call a regular personnel and then shifting him out. Like, uh, I don't know if, if Roddy says anything about, uh, I might be saying something I just read that Roddy said this morning, which has really pissed me off, but the guy from LSU, I mean, he, he could do some of those things that he did. Did you say that? Yes. That's okay. Oh, shit. Myself. I hate that, but but he could. You know, everybody remember we talked about it to, about it, LSU just lining up in regular people all the time and then getting to other formations without having to. And Dane and I talked about it on our podcast where you, you can't sub against that. So I think uh, Munkin will use that some using both of those guys in there, and uh, and you can do that with Macintosh too. And this kid from uh, Valdosta. Uh, I mean, he can. He's got more catches in high school than any of these guys ever had coming in, doesn't he, uh, Jake? We're talking about Dajan Edwards. Not where's he from? What school? Colquitt. Colquitt. Yeah. Colquitt. My, that's a terrible thing. He's from Colquitt. Yeah. But uh, he and he got more catches than most kids coming in as a as a running back. He does have more catches than. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a yeah. He's a. I mean, he's. Uh, they used him all over the field. He was a kid that lined up in the slot for him if they needed him to. But out of the backfield, I think tremendous hands. And I think that he's got a real chance to make an impact in Georgia's offense this year because of that ability. Uh, you're going to be looking for a guy to replace some of that, what you lost with uh, DeAndre Swift, who replaced what you lost with Sony Michelle in that regard. I think Dejan Edwards really solid out of the backfield with the hands. Well, and I, uh, for full disclosure, I do have to say that I, I compared James Cook to Clyde. Uh, Edwards Hilaire in the 3 2 1 report. I completely stole that from Coach. From one, he and uh, Dave, one of their previous podcasts, said, I thought, and I've been thinking about that connection. I'm like, yeah. And yes, then, and so true. I, we just recycle everything. No, I just I, well, I completely <laughs> stole it. So Coach is basically calling me out on that. So, yes. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I was probably, but I'm going to no, tell you. You did mention so, it uh, when I really the like first podcast you guys did. And I'm like, but no, yeah. well, I've been hearing great things about him. So we wrote about him in the 3 2 1. And I said, for a guy who comes out of the backfield, he's going to come out just slashing and burning from the backfield, very similar. And I was looking for a, you know, trying to think of a guy recently. And I'm like, oh, shit, Clyde, you know, yeah. who, who's doing so well. So that's the – I uh, know this, the the, uh, the Dale McGee, who I have tremendous respect for, not only his coaching ability and the kind of guy, man he is, but he's one of the real good evaluators. And, you know, he turns down some guys – Sometimes people kind of look at, hey, why didn't you take him? But he's always looking ahead. And he, he he had this guy in his hip pocket the whole way. 
and uh, he, he's high on him, and that, that's enough for me. I mean, you watch the tape, he jumps out at you. Well, and everybody, there was this, there was that sense, you know, that, oh, uh, you, you lost Zach Evans, and that kind of broke everyone's heart, and they thought, oh, Dejan is a consolation prize. But like you said, Edwards was in the hip pocket the whole time. I mean, they had him ready to go. It was really a question of whether or not he was going to get the scores he needed and, and be able to qualify. That was the only thing really holding him back. Once they realized that was a go, it seemed like uh, that became the move quickly. Yeah. And he wanted to come here too. I like that too. I like a guy that, that uh, can't wait to say, I'm going to come to Georgia. I mean, and, and that shows you a lot of gumption on his part that he would hold out waiting on us to clear for him because everybody's trying to get him commit. I mean, that should mean a lot to all our fans here. Here's a guy that held out and got what he wanted. And uh, that, that makes it even better. I think. Love it. Agree. Uh, any other questions we got? Uh, no, I was going to touch real quick on uh, the wide receivers. Uh, make sure to get over to UGA sports.com and check out the piece we did this weekend over, uh, you know, where does Georgia turn now? Romello Brinson, uh, four-star wide receiver announced his commitment to Miami this weekend. Not a huge surprise. It was one of those that kind of went back and forth. Georgia did want a piece of him for sure. I'm not going to even, you know, I, I think sometimes we get accused of like playing it down like they didn't want him. They wanted this kid. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a situation, though, where where does Georgia go next? We broke down five uh, possibilities. And then we've got an update uh, today over on the board on Quentin Barnes, uh, a guy that we spoke to out of Tennessee, six foot three, 180 pounds, rivals 250 kid, just picked up an offer from Georgia last week. I asked him, you know, he's already got a top five out. I said, dog's too late. He said, it's never too late. I'm really interested in what Georgia has to offer. So go over and check that out. I think he's going to be an interesting guy to watch moving forward, especially with his size uh, that he brings to the field. Fun to watch. How about that West Coast receiver? How are we doing on him? Uh, Xavier Worthy, yeah, out of Fresno. Um, I, you know, I feel like Oregon's going to be tough to beat there. Looks like that's the play right now. Um, I think most people are feeling that. It'll be interesting to see how much longer this goes. I think that the longer it goes, the more opportunity Georgia gets to get him on campus. That would be a beneficial thing, especially having Kendall Milton here uh, from the same hometown. So, uh, you know, if it, if it continues on uh, and stretches out, uh, Georgia could still be a very real player in this. But I think if it were to end anytime soon, Oregon looks like the play. They just got another receiver too, didn't they, Oregon? Yeah, Oregon's tearing it up, man. Oregon is – Cristobal's not playing any games out west. And he – well, I'll tell you what, it feels like to me he's creating that same gap that Dabo's got in the in the ACC. I mean, he's he's working on building a talent gap up there at, uh, at Oregon that's going to be tough for anybody to overcome. Well, then, Kirby, two, word, two to words. Two words for Mario – Guess what they are. What are they? Come on, Roddy. Come on and guess two words. Two words. Phil Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say fishing cabin, but that's all. Man. <laughs> hey, Phil Knight. Now, I'm going to tell you this. When they do that thing where those guys can get their, their rights with the NIL, is that what you call it? Where they can. Yes. NLI. NLI, whatever it is, I'm just telling you. Oh wait, no, I'm not thinking your LOIs. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm talking image, about the like, thing where you can no, you, the your like, you can and, uh, you can sell your likeness and you NIL. Get to, NIL. NIL NLI is the national letter of intent. That's the, yeah, <laughs> NIL. Is what I said was NIL. So I'm telling the, you, NIL. people that have got I mean, a good you watch, abbreviations. You watch Phil Knight and Walmart and people like that. It's oh yeah, I, also there was when we want to go to Arkansas. For what? Hmm? Walmart's going to get in. Oh. <laughs> For what? <laughs> we, our six, uh, Pittman, our six obviously. in Arkansas just said, <laughs> screw you, Jake. No, I'm like, actually a fan. It's pretty cool. But, but you know, you notice when uh, Florida just passed their – the state of Florida just passed their law about the, the uh, uh, name, image, and likeness, you got the governor saying, well, I think uh, if any good blue chip athletes are out there, they need to be coming to the state of Florida. So you're about to see competition for these kids. I mean, you don't think the camp is going to be like, yeah, we got a law too. And uh, everybody come play for Kirby. That's a guy from Athens. He loves the dogs. He, he'll have, you're going to, I can foresee a situation where these politicians are lining up with the big corporations that are in their states to say, Hey, we need to come up with some sort of a endorsement deal for this kid. 
you know. I'll give. I, I got to tell you though, I give those Florida guys credit. That's uh, that's a strong endorsement to have your governor come out and say that. Well, you that's think here's a, Kemp's not going to do it in like thirty oh, minutes? I know. Yeah. Kemp's gonna here's the thing that's going to happen. I think. I think all these congressmen and these legislators, they're going to put a lot of pressure on the NCAA. You know, NCAA is saying it's going to be two more years and all that. And now they got this lawsuit where these kids are trying to get back pay on it. I mean, I can see, I can see the power schools. I mean, NCAA could be history over this. Yeah. And you What's remember that old Coke commercial where uh, he hands his jersey? Is George Pickens going to be in a, in a new version of that? With the Coke commercial handing off the jersey to the kid. Yeah, we got. You just can't do anything with Georgia likeness. In it. You can't yeah. do anything with the likeness. So you, you just it, nothing to do with the sport or anything. You just. It's just so. But, uh, it's so upsetting. But I do know that we. I do know that money, every reeling in the kids. You know. <laughs> every Georgia, every Georgia player is going to be on this show and endorse all of our sponsors. So that's going to be go. part of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't thought about that. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get this set up we'll get this set up pretty quick i uh folks that's all the time we have for this week's show i'm sorry if you had questions and we didn't get to them we will try to get to them next week you need to keep a running list of the questions we don't get to you know, there were some last week we did not get to so uh big shout out to all of our sponsors uh classic city eats where we're having a great lunch uh your pie where you can get free delivery academia brewing company with their new beers athens four with their new finance deals and of course our friends at aaron overhead doors who take care of the, all of our uh, viewers and readers with fantastic customer service big shout out to coach donna for being on the show dane young and even the uh, uh four eyes here who has to be on the show and uh, jake roos we will talk to you folks next week take care